Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shape It Up Live. If you are on, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and say hi. You can also write in the comments. So um, while people are coming on, I'm just going to let you know what we're going to talk about today. So welcome again to the Shape It Up Live show. Today we're going to be chatting about how to boost your metabolism when you're over 40. So this is for you ladies out there who think that you're over 40 and you still can't lose weight or you're struggling to lose weight. Um, it is possible. I am proof of it and I have many clients who are also proof of it. So that is what we are going to talk about today. All right, so I'm just checking all my settings and it looks like everybody can hear me. Um, all right, so if you are on and you can hear me, go ahead and click that like button. And if you're new to Shape It Up um, live or any live shows, the like button is going to be on the bottom somewhere on your screen. Now, it depends on if you're watching on your phone or if you are watching on your laptop, so it might be in a different spot. Um, and you can feel free to express yourself if there is another emoji that you like to click besides the like button. There are heart buttons if you're on Facebook. There are smiley faces. There are angry faces, which I'm hoping not to see any of those. But um, there are many different buttons on those emojis that you can say hi. Hi, Diane. I see you. Oh, Jessica got on. Woohoo. Hi, Kim. All right, so people are filling in, and uh, I'm just going to give another couple seconds. It is 12.01 here, and we are going to get started on our topic in just a second. Um, again, we are talking about how to boost your metabolism over 40. It can be done. It is not some mythical um, creature like the unicorns out there. Uh, it can be done. So, all right. Hey, Kim. Um if you have any questions while we're going through anything, or if you have a question in general, start typing them in now. And then at the end of the broadcast, I will go over any questions that you guys have. And if there's no questions, that's okay too. We'll just wrap it up. Save them for next week. Um, all right. So we are going to get started. It is 12.01, almost 12.02. So again, hey there. In today's Shape It Up video, we're going to be talking about how to boost your metabolism when you're over 40. I'm going to give you three reasons why your metabolism is dropping, and I'm also going to give you ways to boost your metabolism to get the, that fire stoked and get you uh, start moving. Um, so if we have never met before, my name is Nicole Simonin. I am a personal trainer with a background in physical therapy and a former professional ballet dancer. Um, I do help women over 40 get fit and get comfortable in their own skin. And you can learn more about Shape It Up by going to shapeitupfitness.com. All right. So thank you again so much for being here because I know it's the middle of the afternoon and you're probably on your lunch break maybe, but I'm glad you're here. And Jessica says, I so need this. <laughs> so good. <laughs> you're in the right spot, Jessica. Um, all right. So as you start to age, your metabolism does decrease. And if you have read any of the tabloids or the fitness magazines or, you know, stuff that's kind of not exactly pseudo, it's like pseudoscience. <laughs> I'm not saying they're wrong, but based on studies, it is not as big of a decrease in your metabolism dropping as they make it out to be. Um, so, not only do you kind of lose it, it's like 1% or 2% every decade or something. It's really, really not that significant. Um, but the best thing is about that is that you can prevent this. You can prevent the decline. So here are the three reasons why your metabolism is dropping. Number one, you are losing muscle mass. Number two, you are not as active as you used to be. And number three, you are still eating like you did when you were 20. We are no longer 20. I'm sorry, I'm not 20 year old here, but for most of you, we are over 40 or approaching 40. Uh, you can't eat like you did when you were 20. You just, your metabolism is different. So how do you boost your metabolism when you're over 40? The biggest suggestion I can make is you have to lift up those weights. You need to start weight training. The whole process of weight training is to kind of 
tear down the muscle. It sounds awful, I know, but tear down the muscle. But when you do tear it down, as it builds back up, it builds back stronger and bigger. You are not going to look like She-Ra. You are not going to look like, you know, this big beefy woman, unless that's what you want to look like. Um, but you have to be very, very specific in order to get that look. It is really, really hard to get that look. Um, so the whole point of having more muscle is you're going to burn more calories sitting here doing absolutely nothing. Muscle is very metabolic. You need to keep feeding it and it needs to stay, um, it helps rev up the metabolism. So more muscle, the better. Um, more muscle mass increases your resting metabolic rate, which is what I just said. Basically, sitting here doing nothing, you know, we're burning more calories if you have more muscle mass. Now, this is opposed to straight cardio because if you just did straight cardio, you're typically only burning what the amount is that you're on the treadmill or the bike or what have you. Once you stop that cardio, you might get a little bit of afterburn, but you're not going to get as much as you do when you're muscle building, your muscle training, because as you're building muscle, like I said, you're trying to tear down the muscle to build it back up. So you actually are recovering after your workout. Um, so you're going to have more metabolic burn throughout the day because you fatigued your muscles and they're trying to rebuild. So recovery is very important too after your workouts. Um, with weight training, it's also going to decrease your body fat and it'll also help fill out the skin as you lose weight. So think about it, you know, as your muscle gets bigger and your fat goes down, you still got to fill out that skin. And as we get older, our skin does not have the same elasticity as it did when we were 20. <laughs> so definitely, again, back to more muscle. Um, the other advantages of having more muscle is you're going to be more active when you're older. So not only is it going to help metabolically, but um, it's going to help you in the long run. So you need to get on a weight training program. Definitely, definitely get started. Ditch those five pound weights and slowly start increasing whatever you have. If you need help with that, give me a shout out and we'll get you started on something. Um, the next way is to increase your activity. This does not mean that you need to sign up at the gym and go do some insane workout where you feel like you're going to die. Um, a great way to start is just increasing your daily steps. So if you are only doing 5,000 steps a day, which I got news for you is pretty average for the average American, um, and that's not really a lot of steps. So if you start off at 5,000, try to increase it to like 8,000 or even 6,000 and see how you do. The recommended minimum steps per day is 10,000 steps. So if you're doing less than five, we got a ways to go, right? Not that you can't do it. It's just you got to get started on doing it. Um, if you hear my dog in the background, <laughs> she's kicking her feet. I don't know what she wants, but anyway. <laughs> um, the other way is to increase your steps in general. So that means park parking further from your entrance. Um, if you have work, you can do a working walk meeting. You can take the stairs, walk your dog, take your kids or your grandkids to the park, anything to give you extra activity. So don't feel like you have to pound on the treadmill for six hours in order to get your activity level up. You can do little things that are gonna add up in the long run. The next thing you need to do is adjust your eating. So remember, you're, you're not gonna be able to eat like you did when you were 20. It's just not happening. <laughs> so back in the day, you probably eat a ton and really not gain, or if you did gain, you just cut back a little bit and bam, those five pounds came off or what have you. It is a little bit trickier as you get older. The first thing that probably comes to mind when I say that is, oh my gosh, I have to eat less. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> um, when you say that to yourself, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel excited to eat less? I know it doesn't for me. I don't want to eat less. <laughs> I want to eat more. <laughs> um, so again, that's where the muscle, building muscle comes in, because if you have more muscle, you, you actually get to eat more. So keep that in mind. Um, if you, you do want to make sure that you aren't overeating. If you are eating 3,000 calories per day, that is way more than what you need if you are overweight. If you are only eating 1,200 calories a day, because this is the normal standard for the regular diet standards. You have to eat 1,200 calories a day or lower. You do not want to cut your calories. 1,200 calories, unless you're under five foot, five foot, 
your minimum is really 1400 calories a day. So if you're eating 1200 calories a day, you need to bump it up. Um, so, and you can do that by increasing your activity, increasing your lean muscle mass, uh, and also by doing these following suggestions. So when you're talking about food, you want to make sure you have enough protein in each meal. Protein is really key to muscle building. There is some discrepancy on how much protein. You know, keto is like the new diet, and that's very, very high protein. Ten years ago, it was all, you know, low fat. So it's going to change every year. So I really feel like, you know, moderation is key here. But the recommended dietary allowance, which is the RDA, they set our standards for nutrition, they recommend 0.8 grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight. What does that mean? <laughs> that means if you weighed 145 pounds, you would need about 52.7 grams of protein per day. Now, this is the minimum that they require, they think that we need to survive. So when you think RDA, they're pretty much setting the bar as low as possible just to kind of sustain life. The American College of Sports Medicine, which is like the gold standard of personal training, um, they suggest 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight. Not to get into math, I think the easiest way to figure this out is just to multiply your current weight times 1 or 1.5. So if you're at 1.5 and you're on the higher end, that is someone who is really heavily into bodybuilding. If you are just kind of doing a lifestyle change, I think one is a good average to kind of aim for. Now, if you're 150 pounds, or even if you're 200 pounds, and you multiply that by one, that's 200 grams of protein. That is a lot of protein. So my suggestion is, is start with the RDA recommendations of 0.8, and then kind of cut back down. Or if you have an ideal weight in mind, so say you want to weigh 120 pounds, then stay there. Start with 120 grams of protein, and then as you get down to where you want to be, your protein levels will be um, within range. Now, please note that if you have any kind of kidney disorders or any other issues, you, that, you know, increasing your protein, that could be damaging to you. So always, always, always talk to your doctor before you make any nutritional changes, like significant dietary changes. And that way you're safe because I do have some clients that do have kidney disorders and they should not be eating a lot of protein. So you don't know if you're one of them unless you've been checked. So make sure you always check with your doctor before you take anybody's recommendations on what you should or should not eat. Um, so the second part of the food is to eat breakfast. When you've been sleeping, you are in a fasted state. So obviously we're not eating, hopefully while we're sleeping, because that would be kind of unusual. <laughs> um, and your blood sugar levels are going to be really low when you wake up. You need to eat breakfast to get your brain working and your body ready for whatever activity you're doing. It doesn't have to be a huge breakfast. It can't, it doesn't have to be, you know, a thing of eggs and everything. It could be just something small. I would recommend something that has carbs, protein, and fats in it, a little bit of fats in the morning. Um, but that's just to get your brain working. And for those of you who say you can't eat first thing in the morning, here's what I think the issue is. It's not that you can't eat in the morning. It's that you probably ate too much the night before for dinner, or maybe you had a later meal in the evening and your body just hasn't metabolized all that food yet. Um, it's not to say that you can't eat after six or anything like that, but it's just maybe you had a little bit too much than your body needed to metabolize from, you know, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. the following morning. So my suggestion might be to kind of make your meal a little bit smaller in the evening and see how you feel the next morning. And that's going to vary depending on what you've done that day or what you've eaten that day, that kind of thing. So. Um, that's kind of like a test it out and see how it goes for you. Uh, the next one um, is eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full. This is very subjective. And if you are, your hormones are really out of whack, this could be very off balance for you. So 
So you need to figure out one, are your hormones in check? And number two, are you really hungry? Because a lot of times it's the brain that tells us we're hungry and we're not really physically hungry. So if your stomach is growling, if you're salivating, you're generally speaking, you're hungry, especially if your stomach's growling. Um, if you're thinking about the donuts that you smell coming from the break room, you are probably not hungry. <laughs> you're just getting that smell and you're thinking about donuts. Um, so the hunger scale, basically, it's very simple. There are different versions of it. I like the very simple one. It's one to five. One is you're starving to death. You are, like, dying to eat some food. Number two is you're hungry. Your stomach's starting to growl. You're starting to want food. Number three is neutral. Number four is comfortably full. And number five is stuffed, like we overate. Imagine Thanksgiving Day. Um... So we never want to get to one, and we never want to get to five. We want to stay between two and four. And ideally, most of the day, we should be neutral, which is three. So if you're feeling like you're starting to get hungry, that's your two. You eat, and you're like three teetering into four, that comfortably full area, and that's pretty much where you stay. So you don't want to be starving, and you don't want to be stuffed. You want to be kind of right in the middle. I like to tell clients that if you are eating a meal – and comfortably full because comfortably full is subjective. If you feel like you can go for a brisk walk after you eat and you don't feel like you could get a cramp or want to throw up, then you're probably within that range until you start feeling what it means to you to feel comfortably full. All right, so to recap on how to boost your metabolism over 40, you need three things. You need to boost, you need to build your muscle. You need to keep moving. I like to say earn your sit or earn your sit time. Uh, if you, I like to watch TV. There's no problem with watching TV. Just you have to be able to earn that sit time. So you need to be active throughout the day, and then you've earned that time to sit and watch TV. Number three, you need to eat. We need to stop this dieter's mentality of you know deprivation and sacrifice. Food is fuel, and... Emotional eating is something completely different, <laughs> so we'll save that for another topic. Um, so those are the three things. Build muscle, you got to keep moving, increase your activity levels, and you need to eat food. If you would like help putting this together for you for faster fat loss results, you can request a free consult with me. Um, you can just go to shapeitupfitness.com. It's absolutely free. We're going to discuss on where you're at and where you'd like to go. And We'll figure out if I can help you, and that will be um, what the consult's about, and it's absolutely free. So if you want to check that out, you can go there. All right, so I'm just going to scroll through the feed and see if we have any comments. Um, we are broadcasting live from on Facebook and on YouTube, and I have to tell you, I got YouTube on my phone, and I'm really not sure how to check the comments. So <laughs> um, leave a comment, and I will comment after the video, and I will try to figure that out for next week. Um, last week when I did the YouTube video, um, oh, Sharon just posted, but during the day I'm not usually hungry. So, okay, so I think I know you're, where you're going with this, Sharon. So if you're not hungry throughout the day, um, a lot of times I like to kind of pull back a little bit and kind of get you to the point where your metabolism is kind of stirring up. So here's how you know if your metabolism is on point. You are hungry every three to four hours. Um, you are not really emotionally eating. You're not craving things. And it's kind of like a, every three to four hours, okay, my stomach's growling. I'm going to grab a little bit to eat and then move on through the rest of the day. So if you're not hungry throughout the day, uh, I always say kind of decrease your portion. So if breakfast is this big, you make it this big the next day and just see how you feel. The important thing is, is that you want to make sure you have food with you at all times, because if you do start to get hungry, you want to be able to have something to eat because you do not want to get to that starving point where you're so hungry, you're just going to eat anything and everything that you see. So my suggestion to you, Sharon, is to Decrease your portion sizes, and what you might find is if you decrease them for one day, the next day all of a sudden your your body will kick in and you'll start to be hungry. Um, there are some um, possible situations, like maybe your thyroid might be off. Um, there's some other medical issues that might be involved, but if you are completely healthy, that would be my suggestion to you is to kind of pare them down, 
for a day or two and then see what happens and see if your metabolism starts stoking up. Um, when I said that you should not go lower than 1,200 calories, in this situation, you may be lower than 1,200 calories for a day or two. That is not going to kill you. That is not going to stall your metabolism. But if you're not hungry throughout the day and, you and you're overweight, you, you have some body fat to feed off of. I know that sounds horrible, but um, you should be able to kind of recharge your metabolism that way. If you have insulin issues, that's another thing. Um, that could affect your metabolism and the fact that you may not feel like you're hungry. So I have to help Sharon. All right. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. I know we're running a little over. It's okay. Um, Jessica, I have to give a shout out to Jessica who's on here. She has lost over 85 pounds and um, with one of my programs. And she says she started increasing her steps. That was her first major step she did in her weight loss journey, which I remember talking to you about. And um, she made a rule that she couldn't go to bed unless she hit 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 a day. Um, hi, Tara. I see you on there. Jessica, I want to eat a whole cake. <laughs> I hear you, Jessica. We all have those cravings. <laughs> from time to time. Um, Kim, some nights I find myself jogging or stepping next to my bed to reach my 10,000 steps. Yes, good. Yeah, Kim has come a long way um, with her steps. I remember starting with you and they were very low and now you're doing awesome. So bravo, you're doing good. All right, Tara. Hi, Tara. Um, let's see. Oh, hi, Melissa. How are you? I haven't talked to you in a while. Oh, bye, Jessica. Oh, hi, Monica. We got some people jumping in. I don't know when you guys jumped in, but I hope you caught the, the video. Um, so Diane says, oh, hi, Tara Lee. So Diane says, so ideally, if your metabolism is on track, I should be hungry every three to four hours. Yes, Diane. So ideally, you should be hungry every three to four hours um, if your metabolism is on point. Uh, again, if you have insulin issues or something like that, that's a little different. Like if you have blood sugar issues, uh, sometimes, um, like, I don't know if any, I know some of you guys know, but like I have reactive hypoglycemia has nothing to do with diabetes. It's just for some reason, my body needs to eat every three to four hours. If I don't, my blood sugar drops and I pass out. <laughs> Not exactly a fun experience. So I'm forced to eat pretty much every three to four hours. I have found, depending on what I'm eating, sometimes I can push the envelope a little bit more. But um, for me, I get really excited when my stomach growls because that's not a feeling that I have often. A lot of times it's my blood sugar tanking. So, so yes, Diane, every three to four hours. All right. Um, Tara Lee says hello. Hi, Tara Lee. All right. Any questions? Any more questions? just happened okay so I don't see any oh wait a minute my computer is going crazy here hold on a second I don't see any more questions um, if you are just catching the end of this you can catch this also I'll rebroadcast rebroadcast it on Facebook and on YouTube you can also check it out on shapeitupfitness.com um, next week we are going to be talking about low carb diets and what they don't tell you about low carb diets. That happens, so the Shape It Up Live show happens every Wednesday at noon um, Eastern time. And I think that's all for today. So thank you guys so much for being here. And remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits. And I will see you hopefully next week. So take care. Bye-bye.